Hello, I'm Laura Marshall. And I'm Melinda Rose, and this is Light Matters for January 18th, 2012. In this week's Five Minutes to Enlightenment, graphene quantum dots are the next big small thing, cancer cells are detected before they become tumors, we bring you some notable business news, and we invite you to a special event at our booth at SPIE Photonics West. Using a simple one-step chemical process, a Rice University lab can turn carbon fiber into graphene quantum dots, semiconducting nanocrystals promising for electronic, optical, and biomedical applications. The new one-step technique uses cheap and plentiful carbon fibers. The sub-5 nanometer carbon-based quantum dots produced are highly soluble and their size and photoluminescent properties can be controlled via the temperature at which they're created. The fluorescence of graphene dots is more stable and they don't photo bleach like fluorophores. The results, done in collaboration with colleagues in China, India, Japan, and Texas Medical Center, were published online this month in Nano Letters. A device based on laser-induced ultrasound technology can detect single melanoma cells in blood samples at a fraction of the cost of current cancer tests. Melanoma, an aggressive cancer, is characterized by skin growths that kill quickly if they enter the bloodstream and spread throughout the body. MRI or CT imaging requires that tumors be at least a few millimeters in diameter, but by then they already consist of millions of cells. John Viator at the University of Missouri's Bond Life Sciences Center invented a photoacoustic device that can look for single melanoma cells moving through the bloodstream. Blood samples are put inside the machine, which is about the size of a small copier. Melanoma cells separate from red blood cells, but stay with the equally dense white blood cells. The two types of cells are then hit with a short pulse of high-intensity laser light as they pass by. White blood cells reflect the light, while the cancerous cells absorb it. The beam heats the cancerous cell rapidly, expanding it and causing it to emit a measurable pressure wave, allowing the suspect cell to be detected. The whole process takes about 10 minutes. Viator's ultimate goal is to use photoacoustic methods to detect other cancers, including breast and prostate. The device should be available to researchers by the end of next year and commercially available for clinical use in two or three years, pending FDA approval. Amid widespread speculation that will soon file for bankruptcy, Kodak said last week it will reduce its business segments from three to two to reduce costs and help accelerate its digital transformation. The new commercial and consumer units replace three previous groups, film, photo finishing and entertainment, consumer digital imaging, and graphic communications. Kodak also recently filed patent infringement cases against Fuji, Apple, and HTC related to its digital imaging technology. Kodak said the Fujifilm suit was in response to a filing Fuji made against it in October while the two companies were in discussions on a licensing agreement. The complaint against Fuji is for infringement of five patents, while the Apple and HTC suit alleges that their camera-enabled smartphones and tablets infringe on four patents related to transmitting digital images. The complaint against HTC also asserts infringement of a patent to preview images, something Kodak filed suit against Apple and Research in Motion in 2010 and is still pending. Kodak announced in July it is trying to sell more than 1,100 digital imaging patents, about 10% of its total U.S. patent portfolio. Munich-based Laser 2000 has established a machine vision sales team to address increased international demand for its industrial and scientific image processing technology. The company also hired Armin Herweg as an industrial image processing specialist and said it plans to hire additional employees this year. California-based OptiView and Carl Zeiss Meditech have resolved two pending patent infringement cases, the company said last week. They dismissed all currently pending litigation and signed a cross-license agreement of certain issued and soon-to-be-issued patents controlled or owned by each party. Well, we're off to SPIE Photonics West next week, and in addition to attending many interesting talks and special events, we'll be hosting one of our own at the Photonics Media Booth. Yes, visit us at Booth 323 on Wednesday, January 25th between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. and share with us how you are using light to change the world and you could receive a coveted Light Matters t-shirt. For appearing on camera, you'll also be entered into our drawing for an iPad 2. But if you're not attending Photonics West, don't despair. You can still win an iPad 2. You can enter by sharing a link to this or any episode of Light Matters with a friend or colleague. Email them about an interesting story you saw on Light Matters, include a link to the show, and copy us on that email, and maybe you'll win. You can do that very easily by clicking the Share a Link button on our homepage at photonics.com. And in other Photonics West news, we'll be hosting the fourth annual PRISM Awards with SPIE on January 25th, and wish all the finalists good luck as the winners of the most innovative photonic products of the year will be announced that night. 
Watch for a special report early next week from the BIOS show at Photonics West. After that, we'll be reporting from the rest of the Photonics West conference and marketplace. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next week from San Francisco with another five minutes of enlightenment. Thank you.